Hello, my name is Michelle Oliveira and I'm a PhD student in plant pathology with the University of Florida under the supervision of Dr. Natalia Perez. Today I'm going to talk about a disease on strawberries, Clototricum crown rot. This disease is very important for warm growing regions. It's caused by a pathogen that's Clototricum glosperiotis or Clototricum frugari and this pathogen loves warm weather. Can you show us some of the plants that is infected with the Colectricum crown rot in this field here right now? Sure. The initial symptoms of the disease start with the wilting of the plants, as you can see here. It looks like a water stress, and then the disease develops, and eventually the plant will look like that. And eventually the plant is going to be completely dead. The symptoms from the beginning until the plant collapse can vary and it depends on the, the temperature, the weather uh, at, at the time of the, of the inoculation and the, as the disease progresses. And it can take from up to two to three days from several weeks. Okay, so is there other disease that growers can get confused with? Yes. So, if you see wilting plants in the field, it doesn't mean that's Clototricum that's causing the disease. It's very important for the growers to bring the plants for the plant disease clinic so we can properly diagnose what, which pathogen is causing the disease. Uh, other pathogens that can cause the same symptoms of wilting and dying plants in the field are Phytophthora and Macrophomena. I'm gonna take the whole plant out with the crown. Okay. And then what we do in the plant disease clinic is we cut the crown open. And you see vascular discoloration, uh, brownish color in the crown over here, over here. Okay, so this is a vascular pathogen? Yes. So that affects xylem and the water conducting tissues? Yes, that's why you see the wilting of the plants. Mm, that's interesting. So the water doesn't go up. And plants and start wilting plants and drying. Yes. Okay. So what is the current situation of this disease right now in Florida? In the past two seasons, this Colotachcum crown rod was uh, Colotachcum glosperiatus was the main pathogen isolated from from all the crown rods that arrived in the plant disease clinic. When the nursery propagation used to be in Florida several years ago, this was a much, import, much important pathogen for Florida production, but whenever it moved up to, to Canada and to the southern states in the United States, it started to decrease the amount of Colotogicum crown rod we see in the fields. Okay. However, there are the, the pathogen, Colotogicum glosperiotis, can survive around strawberry fields, especially in oak trees and, and other weeds and non-cultivated non hosts. There are no known cultivars resistant, completely resistant to Colotogicum glosperiotis. Florida Festival, which is this cultivar, and Florida Beauty are, are very susceptible to Colotogicum glosperiotis and Florida Radiance sensation are moderate resistant to it. So we are here in the strawberry plant pathology lab and we're gonna go see Michelle uh, that she processed the strawberry crowns that she got from the field and see how she diagnoses it and how she processes it. Hey Michelle what's happening here? Hey! Hey! So I, ha I have a fresh sample from the field. The mm -hmm. plants were wilting like we showed before okay. and I cut it in half. Okay. And what I'm doing here, I'm isolating the, the pathogen from the crown. Okay, that's like infected crown, yes? That's an infected crown. Um, sterilizing the... Sterilizing the equipment. And you see the symptom, the vascular discoloration. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna take a small piece of it. Mm -hmm. Place it in the media. The regular media. Okay. That's the uh, general isolation general media. media. So how long you keep there? So I how leave it there. I leave it there for five to seven days. Okay. Until it grows and I can see sporulation. Okay. And you have some so spores there on the computer too. After probably a week, mm -hmm. you're gonna see a plate full okay. of spores. 
like you see nice. here. Okay. And all this orange mucilage uh -huh. is a um, is a, a lot of spores. Okay. So I took a little bit, very tiny little bit of it, and put it and in the slide. Slides, okay. Let's you see the spore see here. The conigia over there. Okay. They're ob oblong shaped mm -hmm. and they have round edges. Okay, so I guess they are the sexual spores? That's asexual spores. Mm -hmm. A Colotachicumulus foriatus not usually uh, produces sexual spores in the pier. I've seen a couple of isolates with sexual spores, they're called ascospores, and they're very similar to this ones, but they're larger than those. But the main spore you see in the field is the, the, the conidia. The spores are conidia. Great. And this, spore, this conidia, they, they really like water, mm -hmm. and the way they are spread to other plants is by rain, and especially when it rains. Great.